Uh, your name? Dave. Dave. Oh. Well, there we go. We've got Dave driving today. You want to say hello, Dave, on the camera? Is that all right? That's fine. Hey, David speaking. How are you? Right. David, you want to tell people about all around the world about the solar power train here at Byron Bay? Uh, what do you want to know? Right, okay. So, to my recollection, uh, engine number one and gearbox number one were taken out, the traction motors and the batteries were put in down there, and uh, the solar panels. That's actually number two engine has been replaced by. Oh, number two's got taken out. Number, oh, that's right. Yeah, number one's still in. Yep. Right. Uh, number number two was taken out. There's two uh, electric motors in there, and they are connected to a dual um, input gearbox, which drives the um, axle on the traditional carbon shaft. No. Okay. So you can. I'm trying to see without seeing without getting your cubby hole. So it runs on solar power. Solar panels on the roof charges up the batteries, and we also got solar panels. On the, um, on the shed, yeah. on top of the shed, and both the stations. And what's the maximum speed it does? Well, an electric, with electric motors can do 60 kilometres an hour. We don't do 60 kilometres an hour, though we do about 30, sometimes 35 max. Um, in diesel mode, if you thought it's converted electric traction, it could actually do 115 on good track. Yeah, so 115 would have both diesel motors and they run on 35 but it can do 60 on electric. Yep. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Right. So 25 section after the level crossing, we dropped yeah. to 25 speed, so that's maximum we can do anyway. Right. No. Well, when I did this track survey up here in 2006, the majority of these sleepers here were all wood, and I noticed that you've done uh, one in one of these steel sleepers with occasionally a timber sleeper and the whole of Mullumbimby when I inspected that there what a couple of months ago I went up there and looked that's all rotten wood so anyway so yeah, what uh, when they um, stored these three cases with um, trap they actually installed is that all right yeah, yeah. One. they actually installed a number of um, steel sleepers yeah I also know that they took the points out of Byron Bay station and put them up here to get into the shed which is a I, I can't confirm no, I'm not sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's like, okay. See, poor Dave, he doesn't know. I'm the guy who does all the issues, rubber line surveys throughout the state of New South Wales for the government. Which is all good. <laughs> not bad. That's why Neil knows me, because when he was asking me what I was up here, and he said, oh, what are you doing? I said, I'm up here doing all the issues, rubber lines. That's how far back he met me before all this here was even built. I've got the photographs here of Byron Bay railway building when it was still a green grass paddock yep. with the old level crossing. Anyway, just for a minute, now Dave, you're pushing a red button. Do you want to tell the people what that is? That's a vigilance control, so Vig if, I, if I don't press that for 30 seconds, there'll be a light come on. Um, five seconds after the light comes on, there's a buzzer comes on. If I don't respond to the buzzer, the, the brakes automatically come on. So it's, it's actually called vigilance control. Right, so just for the noise of the train, so people can hear, I don't know if you can hear Dave on the audio, it's a vigilance control button, and if he, like now the yellow light, come on. Now if he doesn't push the red one. If I don't respond to that buzzer, the brakes will come on. That's right. And so that, that cycles every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds. So that's a safety dead man switch, you might say, but electric style. It's an electric uh, dead man switch, you might say. I've also got the dead man pedal here. That's a dead man pedal down which, there. Which to a non-railway person would look like an accelerator, but it's not. It's not. So what happens, so if Dave has a heart attack and falls off the chair, his foot comes off there, and then it kills everything, and then the brakes come on, correct? Yes, yeah. So I'm not going to take my foot off now because the brakes will come on. No, that's right. But I, um, this is also, if I want to get my right. foot of rest, I can hold that handle down. Right, and let him um, take my foot off. Now, see, so he can take his foot off because he's holding down the brake handle. Right. Would you believe I actually drove this train 45 years ago? Whereabouts? Uh, Richmond and Newcastle. And the other end was at Richmond. And my father used to drive it. Okay. What's that, mate? There he is. Oh, oh yeah, but anyway. <laughs> Yes, this is what Neil calls his favourite level crossing. You know, I was sitting up here one day 
and I was filming him coming across the crossing and this car drove out in front of him and he blew the horn and the guy bloody jumped up and down in the car seat. Well, I had to overrule the local crossings I drive across this is the worst one. Yep, and there's even the worst one when the SRA was still here. And the mileage mark is 884. Actual fact, it's 883.500. Oh, it's a police car. <laughs> Hopefully not. It's actually 883.500 to the level crossing. And look, even the police car had to stop. <laughs> train, train has to ride away over everybody. And there's the frog. Laws of physics support that <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the laws of physics, exactly right, Dave. Train, I don't know you can't. I was going to stop. Yep. So, what's your name? Reef. Nail. Who? What? Reef. Reef? Yes. Like Great Barrier Reef? Yeah. And they named you after the <laughs> reef. Yeah. Right? Well, you're not the only one. I bet you know another kid here called Pod. Oh, really? You know Pod? No. Well, he was born here when I was up here 20 odd years ago and his father said to me, oh, this is my baby son, I call him Pod. He said, why is that? He said, the day he was born, we seen a pod of dolphins. And that's how he got his name. Is that like what your parents said to you? That's like uh, something to do in the local uh, area? No, they were, they were more into surfing, so yeah. Well, there you go, local area. It's Byron Bay surfing, right? Yeah. The same thing. There's, there's the old track over there. That's from the old whaling days, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, that's the uh, siding to the old, the second wharf, which was um, taken down in the 50s or 60s, I think. Yeah, 50s, 60s, yeah. The original wharf came off the town. Um, yeah, where was the old wharf? I, I've seen the photos of it. Was it out there from where the fish and chip shop is I now? Think so. I think basically, yes. Yeah, I thought that's where it was. Yeah, that was the first wharf, and they uh, moved the wharf, built another wharf down here, and that's what that was the siding to that wharf. So the first wharf, if people want to have a look on Google Earth, they got to look and see the, uh, what's the name of the pub over there by the beach? Byron Bay Hotel? Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't go to it, so. You don't go to it? No, neither do I. <laughs> no, I don't drink and drive either. Um, yeah, so there's, there's the old whale road there. And the old whaling factory, that was that one out there back, yeah, across the road there from the green, from the frog. Yep. Which is yeah, which is now a bunch of uh, high-rise apartments or something. They changed the road from when I was up here 20 years ago, 25 years ago, used to, and then they changed it right over there to the other side or something, and they knocked it all down. I still got the photos of it. I don't know if you'd want to see them. you ever want to see them? Uh, not at the moment. No, I'm not talking about now. I mean, God, they're down Sydney in the office, in, in my archive office. Oh, yeah. See, Reeve, I'm the guy who walked up here in 2004 mm. and walked from Casino to Moomba yeah. and was against the closing of the railway line. Oh, okay. But I also made a recommendation for a tourist train from um, Mullumbimby right through up there back to Bangalow. Oh, yeah. And then they chopped it off here, as you can see, and then they had the trouble with the level crossing, and then you end up having to build this, and mm. and now I'm trying to get it from here to go back up to Splendour in the Grass. So, okay. you know, people, I'm going to come back at the other end. I'll see you in a minute. What I'm doing, I just... But no, anyway... So that's in front of the train, see, 661, and I've got 622 over there at Tenderfield. See, it's the same train I drove way back when I was 15 with my father. That's right, we are be talking to Dave anyway. So we'll come back when we go back. Right, what's going on? Here we go, we're back. Right. This is the Mike guy, comes over here from England, who does the train benches. That's my mate Tim, who lives down there in Lipgo. And he's down there in the row, I think. That's, oh god, I forgot his name. Um, Dave just mentioned him. Anyway, there you go. There's young Timmy at Lipgo. Got his phone number too. Oh, I like Tim. He's even on my Facebook. He's on Mr. Hominoid's Facebook. So there we go, 720 class. DMU. What's a DMU stand for, people? Leave me a comment if you can work out what it is. And it's the same train. I was wondering if we have the two diesel engines out west. So, anyway, let's go for a walk. So, what have we got? They changed this a bit here. This is not original. 
right? This unit here is a different set. This is the old Newcastle set. So you can flick the, flick the chairs over. This is original because they've still got the SRA badge on them. It's just upside down because it's <coughs> wrong way up. SRA. And then some were reupholstered. No, it's all SRA original. That's not original. That's that's original. So this unit here was out of Newcastle. So you can buy your little Mertz devices, you can buy your badge. And there's a brooch. And there's a $30. There's your name badge. There's a railway hat. If you're into hats, I can get my mate Jack one of them. And there's a beer coaster. Stubby cooler. Put your can of beer in it or your bottle of beer. Anyway, now a lot of people are very misconception. They think this here is the motor. It's not. It's where the radiators are. The radiators are there vertically, even on that wall there. And the big fans blow the air up and the motors are underneath. And up top of the train, if you look on a video, you will see all the big circular air vents, which I'll show you when we get back to the other end. Now we're going now, so a little jolt. All right, so if you've got a push bike and you want to go around on the bottom by yourself, power train, you put your bike on the train. There you go. All right, that's electric traction motor. That's what it goes to. I've already done a video on this. You can go down the channel and have a look. This is how it all works. That's how they plug it inside the train when they charge it up. They also supply power back to the town grid. That's the solar panels on top of the train, and that's how we do it. I want to get up. I want to get up. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Now, can you hear the traction motor? Let's have a listen. This is the old Richmond service. This is the one I used to get Richmond. This is definitely the one I used to drive up there with my father. Some of the seats here have been reupholstered. There's no SRA on them. That was all done over there at Lismore. I think they've done a pretty good job. They try to mess the colours. Pretty new flooring. Oh, here he comes. Go Reef. Go Reefy. <laughs> We've got toilets on the train. What they that? Is not. And where's the original seat? There's the original blue. And there's the heater. Now how that works? Heats up there. That runs up there on gas. Goes up there. And up in the front of the train is a gas bottle. Right. So here, the train has actually got awards from Newcastle can't really see but I've already done it on the other video it's an engineering award anyway I'm sort of gonna watch see now Reef, what are you doing all the paperwork mate what's that for oh it's just to note how many people have been on and what what merchandise, what tickets I'm selling, just to make it all easier at the end of the day. And how long have you been a... what do you call yourself? Passenger, you wouldn't... passenger attendant, guard, yeah, that kind of thing. Yep. So you actually done your driver uh, guard certificate? Uh, more or less, it's more passenger attendant thing. The only safe working thing I do is give the, <laughs> give the right away. One sec. Clear on the right. <laughs> Now, what, now, it's not a political question, what would your opinion be if they extended this back up to um, where the grass festival was? You'd, you'd have to ask him outside of work. Ah, oh, right, okay, okay. all right. Representatives of the companies we can't touch. Yeah, okay. Right. 
How long did it take him to do all the tracks up, do you reckon, from... Oh, no, you weren't here, were you? No. Hey? No, I, I, I thought you'd been driving for two years. I wasn't here when this line was reopened. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Well, I, I got a good photo of the old original bridge up here with me standing up here with me foot on the middle of it. <laughs> the old timber deck bridge. That was a lot of fun back in them days. I think a lot of people expect this train to come up here flying up here doing 100 k's an hour. You know, they say, oh, it's a train, why doesn't it go faster? That's not the point, is it? No, it's a tourist train. The ride would be over too quickly. It'll be over in one minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. So what's that ticker noise, Dave? That's the Hasler. That's the clock on the Hasler. So what's a Hasler? It's a data recording device. Behind that clock face is actually a tape that records. Oh, in there? Records speed. And, in there, uh, right. A few other values, such as uh, brake pressure on a few other things and there's also a clock so periodically there's a, a time and date stamped onto the uh, tape so it's an irrefutable uh, log of what's been going on what's all this stuff over here what's that that's all related to the electric traction side of things right so, so at least this like this unit's there from the other one at least here you know that thing sticking out in the middle and I couldn't see a thing so that's our speed down here yeah, I, I that's can't see speed. it I'll let you that's speed based on GPS which is slightly different to the speed recorded on the data logger. so the GPS satellite is that's it there and this one here is a mechanical speed of the gearbox basically it is, it is. so you'll see there's a, a couple of k's difference but that, that's what's recorded on the so I I trust a mechanical one more than a satellite, wouldn't you? <laughs> both have their purposes. Yeah, both have their purposes. Right. So okay, what's this one here then? This that your? That's for the regenerative braking on um, on the electric side. So regenerative braking, what would that mean? Like when you put the regenerative braking on, it draws power back from the traction motor back yeah, into the batteries? Basically the traction motors become generators and provide charge back into the batteries. And your handbrake, that's your, that's that, your brake that's, there. That's like, the traditional air brake. Yep, which is what you showed before. You can hold that down and that yep. saves your dead man's pedal down there. There's your horn on the up the yep. top. Pushing forward is suburban and pulling back is your loud one, isn't it? Country horn, yes, that's correct. Yep, and over there you have your speed controllers, which is used with the diesel motor. Third, one third, two thirds full. Yep, so, so that's um, his electric. In electric traction, this has to be set in um, idle. In idle, yep. Yeah, but that's. Can you put your finger on that little electric? That's yeah, that's it there. The that's a throttle for the yeah. electric, that's right. Yeah. But I've now shut off, there's no power being applied. So. Obviously, because we're just rolling in. And I'm losing my camera again. Camera's back on again. I have to get another camera again. <laughs> I don't think cameras like being dropped and thrown around in the back of cars. No. Just, she look good. So you, you're the lucky one that gets at the impulse of points lever for Dave if he's going home. What's that, sorry? You are the lucky one to pull the points lever. No, no, only safe working thing I do is give the ride away. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's what I used to do. I used to do that safe working. Yeah. I actually worked in strap wheel signal box in Sydney in one state in the old fashioned days when we used to pull those big levers. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was about 60. 60 levers we used to have. We used to have them. It was like a big jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. You pull the wrong lever, you throw it up in the driver's face, and you soon get a mouthful from the driver. Why'd you slam the bloody signal in my face for, mate? No, I'm well, bloody on the freight train, you know. So many carriages long, you know. It's a lot of fun. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I'll leave you do your job. Thanks, no Dave. Thank Dave's going to give a little wave. One day. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Anyway, Pearl. That was it. Quick ride. No, See you later.